Go on, start off. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is Adam Breverton, I'm joined by Michael Holland. We are the Crescendo Way. Today our guest is oh, Captain, my captain, Marine Captain Niall Cummins. Mm-hmm. Niall, thanks very much for joining us today. We do appreciate your time. Uh, absolutely, no problem at all. So we've had a fantastic cup run um, for what has been a bit of a difficult season. It's been quite stop-start. We've, we've only played seven league games, but... You know, a momentous cup run. It's been absolutely fantastic. So we'd like to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, fire away. And over to you, Michael. Yeah, go on. Um, what was your, um, what was behind your decision to join Marine on loan in December 2018, you know, when you came from Cajun? Yeah, so I had a, a really bad knee injury in the March of that year. A, a really bad, I thought my, I thought my career was over, actually. Uh, and I'd not long signed quite a lengthy contract at Curzon. Uh, and then when I got injured, um, there's a whole new restructuring in the club, a complete restructuring. Uh, and their financial situation was very, very bad, actually. Uh, and they offloaded quite a lot of the experienced lads quite quickly. Um, they, obviously, I wasn't playing. i just come back from injury. And they said, do you want to go and get fit? And we've had a contact. There was a few clubs that came in, obviously noticed that I wasn't playing. And Marine, and I think Neil, obviously Neil was there at the time, said, uh, you'd like me to come on board. Um, once, obviously, I came on board, it was a, it was a no-brainer um, to stay, because obviously I've, I've played against Marine fans before and Marine teams before, and I can see it, it was quite hostile in the past to play against them, I must admit. Um, probably been given quite a bit of abuse by them as well. Um, but yeah, once I came, and obviously they're on my side, it's a completely different uh, kettle of fish. And it was quite an easy decision to actually stay on in that summer as well, actually, after that. We are there. Uh, we do try to keep it light-hearted, don't we, Muck? With yeah. the abuse. <laughs> 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 I think it's, even fair. it's the ones down the Jubilee Road, then, that are probably the worst. <laughs> <laughs> you get it from all corners. There's some quiet ones that you think, oh, you turn around and you see, how has that gentleman or that lady just said that to me? I can't believe that, but fair enough. I imagine Germano probably gave a lot of abuse as well if you were on the opposition bench. <laughs> That's someone you'll never forget. As long as I live, I'll never forget that guy's face, whether I played with him or against him. That's one thing for sure. <laughs> um, so, when, um, unfortunately, on the season that we were relegated, unfortunately, you missed a large portion of it as well due to the injury. How is that for you as a football player, having to sit out those games towards the end of the season when you are battling relegation? Yeah, it's you know what the whole situation was so weird because obviously in non-league you know a lot about players and you get to know about players even more. And when I looked at just before I even came to Marine, I looked at the players, the list, and I thought it was even worth going there, sort of thing. And I looked down the list, and I, I, I known quite a lot of the players, and I was thinking, how are they where they are? And I, I wasn't single-handedly the reason why we went. And I think one of the ten games I played, we were top of the form guide, and it wasn't because of me. I think I was just almost like the missing piece. Like they had a great team. The defence was great. But they just needed someone that could put the ball in from a yard out. I'm not going to score from 40 yards. And I think there was a, that along with a lot of other things and Neil and changing the system was one of the reasons why we shot the league. When I got that injury, I must admit, I still thought they'd be fine. Uh, I think we were nearly mid-table by then. I thought we'd still have enough. And I think we had a great win against uh, Gainsborough away. I wasn't involved. I thought, yeah, they'll, they'll go on. They'll be safe now. But actually when... I missed a few games, and you can see the slide starting to happen. I watched. I took my son actually to a few games. I think Bamber Bridge at home on that awful day when it was rock hard the ground. I think we lost one or two nil. And then, I, then again, I took my son so far as away, and that was one of the main reasons why I stayed again after that because the tears and you see genuine tears from fans um, and Joanne etc. Just floods of tears, and I was just I was, you don't realise what it means. It's almost you don't realise that non-league fans support their teams how. I might support my own team. And it's really weird to get mostly connected. And when I saw that, and then obviously Neil asked me again to stay, it, it, that was one of the reasons why it was a no-brainer because I felt like I had to give something back. I, I wasn't saying I was at fault, although Neil ran me up and said, you're the reason we got relegated. I thought that was a bit harsh, but I just thought <laughs> I, need, I, I need to be part of this and obviously get them back up. And I was hoping it was going to be just in one season. And I think we could have done it last year, even in the playoffs, but it wasn't to be, unfortunately. Okay, um, next question. I actually remember watching this game, and it's it's about the FA Cup. Really, you were part of the Cajun team, weren't you? That reached the second round against Wimbledon. 
So yeah. It's a bit contrasting. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering what you, you you know the experience of losing that late against Wimbledon. Because I think you were three 0 up when you were ten minutes to go. Oh, and then gosh. what was the experience of obviously scoring the winner for me in the last minute? And obviously you you had you had COVID at the time just before the game, didn't you? So yeah. You it's just it was. I mean, reflecting back on the curse, and I, I said to a few people in, in build ups to that game that I don't want them to experience what I felt that that. I mean, it's one thing feeling that you, you, you've lost in the second round. It's another thing being 3-0 up with 10 minutes to go and you're already wondering who you're going to get in the third round draw. I think they went something like Leeds Arsenal after that. And I was like, oh my God. Um, so the draw was quite favourable as well. And so that was my motivation. And then obviously leading up to the Haven game, I got diagnosed and I thought, oh God, I didn't have any. I had one symptom one day and that was it. But it was rife in school at the time um, in work. And I thought oh, there's a chance I've got it. And luckily it didn't affect me. But... The FA are very stringent on the rules and they didn't let me join up to the, the, the club, the team, until 24 hours before kickoff. And they'd played two games behind closed doors, done lots of sessions. So I was thinking, if I start, 60 minutes max, Neil will play me. Um, but then he, he left me on longer and longer and longer. I think one of the reasons were, they, it's hard to see from TV, but they were a really tall team. Um, some big players, the centre-backs were, were monstrous. Um, so I think that was one of the reasons why I managed to stay on the pitch and then... Luckily, thank God that defender kicked against my back. Otherwise, <laughs> God knows what would have happened. So, coming from Kirsten and over to Marine, how did you find adjusting it? Is is there quite a bit of a difference between the clubs in terms of atmosphere and how things are done? Uh, oh, it's a hard one. Obviously, Kirsten's different now. They've gone down the almost community field where they've got Astro Turf everything on site. So it's a major product. So that's how they get a lot of their revenue. Whereas Marine, obviously, we have to hire out venue. So it's a different type of um, setup there. It's one that will self-run for years and years and years because they've got that infrastructure. Marine's very good because, obviously, the board are very clever with their money and the way they apply themselves. So, actually, the level of football wasn't majorly different. The standard of players could have flipped between the two quite easily, even if it was Conference North. It was no different, the standard of players. Um, but, yeah, there is a few, obviously, different things. We are, Neil is very... Uh, if anyone's ever worked in Neil, I don't know if he's, if he's grown over the years, but he's very thorough. Uh, no stone gets left unturned. Um, we've done so, he's, well, they've done so much analysis and we get so much information that um, I think someone said something the other week about what's the adjustment between non-league and, or sorry, has non-league got more professional over time? And it has. It's good and bad because obviously we've only got four hours a week to train and you don't want to spend an hour in a classroom or doing video analysis. So that side of it can be a bit I was going to say less fun, but it has got very much more professional. And you, you, you get so much. I mean, Alan Morgan, he'll have on the board the last five penalty directions, their penalty's gone. Okay, where their keepers dived the last three times. It's just information, not information overboard, but you need to know it. And it's just, it's phenomenal stuff we get from player, uh, given to us now. Um, what was your reaction to being named captain? Because obviously you haven't been here that long, had you? So. What was that felt like? Yeah, it was. Obviously, when I came there, Danny Mitchell he was a well, fan's favourite. I heard a few sing songs about him. And he was, I think, he's still a great player now. Even he's a bit, a bit older like myself. He's still a fox in the box, and he's, he gets a shot away. But he was there, and I got the impression that I didn't feel like he was going to be there the next season from himself, and um, that was. And Neil wanted a fresh start. I think he wanted not a mass exodus or anything, but he just wanted to imply his own way of football, and he came in. and he just said, I'm coming in for you. He rang me in the summer, I'm coming in for you. And if you do come, the first thing I'm going to do is state you as club captain. I was, it wasn't a little ploy to try and get me to come at all. He just said, this is the viewpoint I'm going in. It's a fresh start. So that was an honour for me. I must admit, I, I captain Curzon for most of the season. And then that, to be a Marine captain, it's, I, know, I, I wouldn't say I'm the most vocal um, captain in the world. I try and lead by example more than not. I mean by that, I mean like the way I conduct myself on and off the pitch. But yeah, I think most... Um, of the Marine team actually could be a captain at some stage you look around the dressing room the, 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 the great lads with great leadership qualities all of them actually That's brilliant I mean it must be such a privilege to be the Marine captain what is it like to be given that captaincy and to work under a manager of Neil Young's pedigree? Yeah well I only knew Neil's name as such um, previously good and bad again um, I've seen some of the clubs he's managed and I'm just a normal teacher like anywhere else where 
you've got I've got Stockport friends, I've got Ultram friends, I've got Chester friends. So I've heard his name said in different ways, I must admit. Um, obviously, when things go on rosy, they've loved him and vice versa. But when you know the guy um, and you see how he works, it's, uh, it's no fluke that he's done what he did with Chester and he's been acknowledged by things like Altrincham, Stockport, Halifax. It's that, that's not a fluke at all. He's very, very good at his job. Um, and again, like you say to Captain Marine, in the 125th year, it was a, it was a major on it. I'm not going to lie. It um, really was. So for that, for me, as a personal, um, uh, on my CV sort of thing, it's a great honour and it's something I'll cherish forever, yeah. Um, the next one to talk about, obviously, um, being talked about like improving you know, the atmosphere next season. I mean, what does it mean to have like a vocal support? I know some players are not particularly bothered are they like by fans <laughs> and non league view yeah, or sound, don't you? But I mean I don't get that with you. I get that it, it does mean something to you like having a vocal support at the club. Oh I, I t- if you've ever played away at a ground and you're one nil up and then the crowd bit get bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger in voice, it does it does make a difference. I'm not gonna lie, you've seen it. I mean South Shields, no wonder their home records how it is. Teams like this when you get a hostile or a vocal support, it's brilliant. I think it happened this year only when we had 200 fans back in, it might even be 400. We scored a goal and it sounded like the place erupted. I was like, oh my God, it was, it's fantastic. And I mean, must admit, Marine don't really have chants as such, do they? Um, they're not very vocal throughout the year. Uh, sorry, throughout the whole game. You get the, the youths that are quite funny and a few of the older lads that have had a, once they've had a beverage or two. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's good once they get a noise level picks up. It does make a massive difference. And like you say, if, you, if you're losing late onto the game or even if you're drawing, that little boost, it, you win a tackle or someone wins a flick on something like that, it does make a big difference, I must admit, it really does. That, I mean, a lot of praise gets sung about the young lads who uh, tend to stand behind the goal. I think their Twitter handle is Marine Fan Zone. And yeah. then there was a group of young lads as well before them, uh, about two or three seasons ago, who were uh, ultramarine, I believe it was. <laughs> it? Um, but yeah. It, it is so important to have them young lads there. And there's definitely been a concerted effort on uh, Twitter to talk about, you know, more of the older people, old ones like us, you know, yeah. getting in the room and getting a chance. I mean, we'll never forget Atherton Collieries when I led the, um, <laughs> I led the conga around the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll everyone was drinks. Fun. Yeah, well, it was free one up and I started joking, saying, oh, if it gets to 5-1, we'll do a conga. And it did. <laughs> my man and my word <laughs> yeah well the fans make a big difference and then like that Mex um, obviously the kit he's been in a lot of contact with them this year even last year I think trying to sort transport out to Rams bottom away it's been a constant um, throughout the last two years and we need them and, and do you know what they, they're a great set of lads their heart's in the right place and yeah we, we, we value everything they do for us and we're not big superstars but we need their encouragement definitely yeah, they're a smashing group of young lads and yeah. they really do yeah. make a lot of difference to the atmosphere. want to move on a bit now onto the Spurs game because a lot of people will be wanting to know about the inside to it. So how was it for you dealing with all that media attention in the build-up to the game? Yeah, it, it was hard. It really was hard. Um, I don't know if I was picked on more than not more often than not because... I, I can speak, speak and communicate, and like some of the lads in the, the dressing room. So I think I was picked on a bit too much, but it was it was surreal. Um, you were getting requests from here and everywhere. Within 24 hours of the haven't game, I'd had Eurosport it's Italy on the phone, some te- some company in America, and I was like, I don't know what to do here. Is it is it hoax? Is it real? Is it? And I had Hotspur um, fan zone. And I'm thinking, no, they're just trying to set me up here because they know I'm an Arsenal fan, and I'm thinking that. So luckily we got a media guy on board, but that, I mean, the whole thing was, I mean, I think everyone in the club at some stage was, I think I seen Nex on TV one day, I seen Baz getting followed in his job, I seen this, that and the other, Dravo on Liverpool TV, I, everyone was everywhere. And, it, and funny enough, actually after the game, it's like you've jumped off a cliff, <laughs> it's just completely <laughs> stopped. But yeah, it's back to it being a normal non-league player, but that was a whole new experience, I must admit, and I don't really... I mean, financially I do, but I don't really envy the, the footballers, superstars, because what they have to go through, we only got a snippet of it, a real, real small snippet, but I mean, they must get some sort of 
I mean, abuse. I mean, I was trolled. I had an Instagram account. Yeah, I had, yeah, I had yeah, a, yeah. a Twitter yeah. account. Yeah, well, Mo, Mo from Salford texted me on the morning of the game. He said, no, why would you just block me? I said, what are you on about? He said he'd sent me a picture and I went, that's not me. That's not even how you spell my name. And next minute I had 4,000 likes for a picture where I called Spurs players all sorts. I was like, oh, no. I need to get that stopped straight away. But, yeah, the whole the whole situation, the whole of, like, before the game, pre-game was, was phenomenal. Yeah, just staying on Tottenham, I mean, what was it like to play against, obviously, Tottenham and the Premier League players? I mean, first 20 minutes, we did really well. Did you feel in the game the first 20 minutes kind of thing? Yeah, we we and the management, we tried a new system, uh, I think, on the Tuesday or Thursday of training. And there was a few lads a bit, is this going to work? We, ch- we adapted it again on the Saturday, actually, to try and change it. And f- everyone felt a bit more comfortable. But it wasn't how we've played all season. And I think, in hindsight, we would have done something completely different. But after 20 minutes, you're thinking, yeah, we're in this. Um, it's, it's, it was bizarre, because obviously they're technically very good and are very astute players. We'd done all the shape work. And then Deli Ali goes and stands completely somewhere where we've not even thought about in the first 20 minutes and just keeps getting on the ball, on the ball, on the ball. But it just shows you how the next level, like Mora, I don't know if TV did him justice. I've only watched the first half still and he got the ball and he was five yards ahead of some other players before he even got a second touch. And you think, my Lord, his, his pace is frightening. But in a, in a, in a physical capacity, it, it really was quite mild as such. I woke up on the Monday, normally after a game, you, you ache and you bruise, you battered. Obviously, there wasn't as many contacts, but it's probably more physical in our league and I'm not going to lie to that, but, but obviously it's a different standard of football and you just seen, they're all athletes. <laughs> I was doing the captain's meeting before the game and with Ben Davis and I always thought Ben Davis was quite a small lad and I was nearly looking at him eye to eye and I was thinking, that's not right. And then I started to do my head, computer in my head quickly. Like, if he's that height, I turned around and Joe Hart, I looked up at him and I couldn't believe him. I was like, oh my Lord. And then Suzoko, the, the human wardrobe, walked behind me. I was like, lads, these are quite big lads, actually. Um, and obviously, there's not an ounce of fat on him. I think Deli Ali must be eight stone, went through. He's, he's pencil thin. But yeah, that was that was something different. And obviously, it was a, it was a fantastic for every one of us, actually. I must have missed. I did like the, the little elf between you and Joe Hart and Deli Ali at that time in the game. Like, I did quite enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, Adam. I was going to um, ask a question I've just thought of as well, which uh, I do apologise, Mucky, for bringing this up. I might throw us off. But for you as the club captain, we're hopeful that you're going to be staying with us for at least a few more years yet. Understand, obviously, time isn't on your side with your playing career. But there is a belief amongst the fans that the foundations are in place now to start going up the leagues should regular football become a thing again, hopefully next season. Having the likes of Neil Kenny sign on and want to stay on, what does that mean for you as club captain and for the club overall? Uh, well, Kenji, first of all, he's the tightest man in history. I'll get that on record straight away. Um, but having him as a player, he, you've seen what he's done this year. He, he's, he's just grown in confidence. He, there was this, I, won't say, I won't steal his thunder, but he said a sentence in the, the haven't game he hadn't seen. He hadn't said boo to a goose all season. Barely spoke to us lads. He's he's a he's a lovely lad, but quite reserved. And um, leaves his obviously his actions on the pitch. And he said a sentence about, about wanting the ball basically, and, and it just showed how much his confidence has grown. And you play like you've got players like that, and you got Baz in midfield, who's just a workhorse. Hermani, Josh Hermani, started signed at the start of the season. And I must admit, in the first two training sessions, I was thinking to myself, what have we signed? Yeah, get him out of the club. And then, obviously, he shut me up because the next session, he was fantastic. His fitness, he obviously had a bit of an injury, that's why. But his, his ability on the pitch, he's so calm on the ball, Josh. He rarely gives the ball away. And then you've got fullbacks. I think the fullbacks are frightening at our level. I think Joycey and Josh are just, just athletes, but above athletes. And then you've got that, obviously, um, with Miley, who's just an animal at the back. It's play alongside that guy. He's a, he is a real legend. And then you've got the experience of Raver. But you look across the, the, the pitch, it's, um, it's, it's inundated with players. I must admit, one of my reservations when I first came board of Neil was, I know over the years he'd had a quite a high turnover of players. And that was my worry. But this year, it's been evident that actually, once he's got what he wants in place, he gives, he, he, obviously, he believes in the players and he passes on that confidence in us. And, they grow and grow and grow. And 
He's not stupid, Neil. He'll, he's already had his feelers out there for who he wants. He would have been watching football non-stop. And not, I'm not saying he's not tapping people up, but he have his eye on people that might be out of contract. And, and I'm sure that's why Leary and all signed Neil Long, because they know how he works. And if you've got someone like that on board, you're going to go from strength to strength. And it's not going to be because of financial reasons why Marine got the, the league, because I think the chairman won't let that happen because they wouldn't want the club to get in a situation where they can't fund themselves. So they'll still have to work on a, a strict budget. But yeah, I think they're really going to go from strength to strength. And the problem with a run like this is there's a lot of attention on the players. Um, yeah. You can, like Kenji, I wouldn't be surprised if Kenji was tied down before he really got you know, too much attention because I know a lot of teams were, were sniffing around him and rightly so, and a few others as well. As well. So it's, 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 I think it's a very um, positive outlook for Marine going forward. And, and to be honest, they should be in the league above anyway. And this should be a, this should be a conversation now about getting to Conference North rather than yes. getting back into the Prem. Um, but once that does happen, and I'm sure it will happen sooner rather than later, I'm sure they'll bounce up again. It's just it's a pity what's going on at the moment. We don't really know what's around the corner, do we? No, that's it. But me and um, me and Michael, we had a really good conversation at length last night, didn't we? And uh, touching the likes of uh, like Bailey. Bailey Passons yeah. when he first came yeah. in. Um, you touched on there about players growing. And I think yeah. Bailey's one of them as well. When he first came in, we were looking for he's, he's no better than Jamano. Yeah. And then he was actually dropped for a couple of games as well mm-hmm. in place of Jamano. But again, he grew and he got into it. And he's only 20. There's still a lot yeah. of football. Yeah. He's got a long football yeah. career ahead. But yeah. I think uh, you've, what you've touched on is right, is right there. We're not really looking at going up we're going up to the Conference North, and I think that is yeah. a real conversation for everyone to be having. Yeah, and, um, definitely. Did you have anything as well you want to add on to this, Moggy? Yeah, I mean, just them, them questions, a few questions from fans in this. So, um, Matty asked them, um, what's, what's been your favourite um, Marine game? Oh, my Lord. Uh, wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think... Oh, wow. Um, it's been quite a lot, actually. I think partly because of the fans. I mean, this year, it's hard to look past the FA Cup run. I'll come back to that in a second. But when we had fans in the ground, you like scoring or being involved in a game when the crowd erupts. And I remember actually when I first came in, we had a, a game against, I think they're called Mikulova at home. And for some reason, the the, uh, the, the goalkeeper made a, made a bit of a beeline for me. He gave me a bit of stick during the game. And I, well, I scored a bit of a tap in. And I, I gave it back in his face a little bit in a celebration, but when the fans erupted behind me, it, it made me like, yes, get in there. You can have that one, you. But that was one of my favourite games because of the, just because we were in a bit of a ding-dong with me. But this year, to go to Colchester away, I'm, I'm, I'm again, sorry, the fans couldn't see that. And the fans, I must admit, we should have started this by conversation by saying, all we've done this year is for the Marine fans. That it, it, it's no one else we've done it for. Yes, family and friends, but Marine fans, they've missed out so much on this because that Colchester pitch was a bowling green stadium was fantastic for League 2 I can't go over that and to go there against full-time players who were giving us some jip on the pitch by the way about enjoy your work on Monday what you do and stuff like that and to get one over on them that that, that obviously I'll be, I'll be like obviously leaning towards the haven't game a little bit because I had a bit more of a contribution in terms of the goal but to go to Colchester not be given a sniff a master plan by Neil I must admit a master plan and we could have stole it again with I think Kenji had a great shot saved by the keeper. That was a result and a half, I must admit, that day. That's probably got to be up there. Uh, got, going on to the Colchester one, I think I've read um, Sam News' piece about you know, well, Neil's um, attention to detail. And he said that you marked their best defender, like passing defender. Uh, obviously, yeah. that's un- unusual for yourself, was it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's strange because we obviously went for a one up front slash um, Mo and Neil to make a three. Um, but obviously their, their pitch is conducive to playing football so we knew they played a bit of football I think they were unbeaten and at home for a long period of time and they were unbeaten that year at home so I was going to go and stand on one centre half um, and then let the other one have it 20 minutes into the game they switched and I went obviously and switched the reason re- what, one of the real reason was we didn't want that Bramble the ex-Arsenal lad to get on the ball the left back um, he, he's really good obviously so when they switched, I was like, do I stay here now because we don't want Brown? He went, no, nope, stay on him. And then I went over to that side and the defender was like, who marking me? I was like, well, the other lad on the ball's rubbish. And he was like, oh, fair enough. <laughs> so he, he knew what we were up to as well, really. So brilliant. I mean, uh, 
we were absolutely buzzing, weren't we, at the time when we got Colchester. We didn't think it was going to get better than that. You know, we're on BBC yeah. Red Button, you know, Little Marine against League Two Colchester. And then, I mean, the fact that that got dwarfed by that Spurs game is just surreal. Oh, how did it? How did it get dwarfed by that? I mean, when that draw was made, everyone was going, Colchester beat Spurs this last year. What's going to happen now? <laughs> Making their own conclusions. One thing I do want to ask you, which I'm curious about, is uh, we just saw Dave Mack put a tweet up the other day showing the picture of you now in the corridor of the changing rooms with the goal after haven't. And it's immortalised now because anytime anyone sees that picture, they will always hear the words, and Marine have their moment. So how is that for you as a football player to be immortalised at a football club now? Um, do you know what? It, 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 it's borderline emotional. I'm not going to lie. It was... He, um, Dave Mack did give me a nudge he went have you seen the mural I was like why is it not where Moses Moses is better than I know so, yeah, but um, he was like I was just saying thank you so much because actually when we came to the Spurs game uh, that, that, that even stands out more above that, that mural because the, the streets were lined with people when I was getting off that coach there was a heart of me, a part of me that was like welling up I was like I can't look at them Oh God, it'll set me off this. This is unreal. The way they've come out of the way, we're in a pandemic. They all know the risks that they're taking. It's not that they were just flouting the rules or anything like that. They were there to show us their support, to say thank you for everything they've done. And it was, everyone was beaming with a smile and it was just that positivity that I think we and obviously the club and the fans have just brought to so many people on this front. And do you know what? That moment, that will stay with me is probably one of my favourite moments at Marine, that walking off that bus or even actually when I was on the top deck and you could just see thousands of people it was a fantastic occasion but in terms of the mural itself to be part of the whoever scored that goal was going to go down in history and I'm fortunate enough to be me but it's not about me it's about the team at the end of the day and that's what I'll always say Brilliant we've got a, we've got a few questions that some supporters have given us from Twitter <laughs> I've, already, I've already beefed them on one of them um, <laughs> so yeah <laughs> Graham Paston asks, with all your new final fame, will you be on Strictly Dancing? I, I didn't ask this, by the way. So. <laughs> I think someone said, I think my brother texted me saying, um, he's tried to ask the bookies for odds on winning I'm a celeb to get me out of here next year, and I told him to do one. I must admit, <laughs> the media take what they want from interviews. Obviously, they want catch lines, catchy lines, etc., etc. and as soon as they find out you're a teacher, they jump on it. But one of the things I said in most interviews was, I'm here to represent Marine. I'm not here for personal fame or glory. So that was always, and obviously that got edited out quite a lot of the time. And I'll always stick with that. Obviously, I'm not here for myself. I'm here for the club first. So that's my viewpoint. Well, it, it always came across. It never, it never came across as self gratification at all in any of the interviews that we watched. Um, one of the questions we've got here as well is um, from a Daniel Owen Sally. So, Sally, sorry, asking, what was your thinking going into the Spurs game? Oh, it's, that, that, that's, a, that's a tricky question because you'd be a fool not to think, what if? What if we did it? What if we did the, the impossible and the greatest ever gap, I think, in FA Cup history? If it happened, I'd, I think we all would have went missing off the face of the planet. There's no way you could do it. But at the back of your mind, you are thinking, there's a real chance I could get humiliated on national TV here. Um, and, and actually, during the game, we obviously held our own brilliantly, but bang, 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 bang. I was like, oh, my Lord, please do not let this happen now. Um, there's a part of me that thinks Mourinho told him to go a bit easy in the second half, I must admit. But, yeah, it, during the lead up to the game, you're so positive, you're so excited, the adrenaline's running all the time. But the back of your mind, you're thinking, there's two things here. Could we do it? And, oh, no, what could happen? <laughs> that was my thoughts, I must admit. I mean, on that as well, I mean, obviously on the lead up to the game, you'd all seen all, all like Tottenham's kids tweeting they're going to win 20-0 and all this, but <laughs> I, I used to thought, you know what, even if we'd lost 10-0, it'd, it'd have been like, it wouldn't have took any shine away from it, none whatsoever. No. Yeah, but no, We've no. got 10 minutes left by the way, so um, next, um, next, next question. You probably know who this is from, by the way. Who's your being your favourite kit man? in your career and I'll, I'm not <laughs> giving away who's asked this question <laughs> do you know what kit men are most underrated people at any club uh, and I've met three or four fantastic people that I've just almost 
unsung heroes and they just get on. But Nex is next level. Um, he, he's even in the group chat. He's just one of the lads. And you know what he's done with like getting the youth lads to the games and sorting them out. And he goes, he goes above and beyond is, is, is what he's, his pay grade and what he gets done. He's just a, a superb player, uh, person. And I think Marine would be a lot worse off if he wasn't at that club, put it that way. I think you'll love that answer. Just it's the top fella to chat to, really is such a great uh, yeah, mech. Yeah, he really is. He really is. Uh Phil Wanton's wanting to know, do you prefer to attack the College Road end or the Crescender end? Wow. I think me uh wow. I think my goals return would probably say the college end. Um, I've only probably scored on one hand at the other end, the cross end, the end. But it's yeah, it's weird. That it's, it's, it's a funny question that because I think the stand, it's we, it, until you're on the pitch, it puts it in a dis- different perspective. I find, um, I find attacking the college end a bit easier, uh, but that's just my preference. And maybe that hill at my age looks a bit higher and a bit harder for me. But yeah, it's it's, it's a weird one. That I shouldn't really have a preference, but scoring at that end when there's a, a big crowd on. It's definitely really nice, I must have been from the stand. We did a um, little poll then, um, yes, well, two days ago, and then um, obviously we started play, playing in gold and black. I was just wondering what's your preference? What do you prefer to play in, the gold and black or the white and black? Uh, the gold and black is not flattering for me at all, I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> the material that's used is shocking, so the white all day long for me, all day, every day of the week. <laughs> and that's what I've always associated Marine every time I've played against Marine in the past, actually. That's what I've always thought of Marine. I know it has a lot of history, the black and gold, but I think if I had my way, I'd let them go back to the white. Um, Discount Davy Walton wants to know who is the best striker you've played with. Oh, oh, oh God. I've played with a few, actually. There's a few that are out there. Um, obviously, Matt Warburton played with him at Kers, and he got a few good news. He went to Northampton. I think he's at Yeovil now. He was a fantastic player. We were almost like... Bit like Quinny and Phillips, you just get all the goals and I'd get all the knocks. Um, I'd like to have played with Mitchley when he was in his prime. Played against him a few times, and you think, no, he's an animal. He's horrible to play against. Um, so that would have been I'd love to have played with him. I must admit, because he's just horrible to play against, um, and would have done a lot of my dirty work. So there's a few out there, but yeah, there's a, between them two is probably the, the, the key two actually. You got more of them. Um, the only ones that we've got left were ones from uh, Sam Devan, but it's something you've already touched on about uh, your opinion on the grown professionalism within non oh, right. Yeah, um, yeah. I think oh, well, Mark Wilcock also asked about you being immortalised, which I think you've already touched on there as well. <laughs> uh, so we can always add lib from this point. So were you able to make the most of the Budweiser fridge? <laughs> <laughs> well, I see. I don't know where they've all got to them beers, but some of them aren't there. So I know we've got some crafty lads in this team. So I bet there's some in their fridges at home. I must admit, um, but no, unfortunately, not yet. The, the whole thing, celebrations, not being able to happen, has it? Um, we've not really had to have a, a team night out. Uh, the having game was the best and worst. I must admit, for me, the elation of winning, and then the back reality of let's go home now, lads. <laughs> what? You didn't get to see family, friends, and my dad rang me. That game was quite early, wasn't it? Yeah, three o'clock. By about eight o'clock, my dad rang me. He was paralytic in a pub in the Isle of Man. And they were all falling over. They were all wrecked. And I was like, I'm just so jealous of you lot over there now. They were celebrating how we I wanted to be celebrating. It looked a great crack over there. But yeah, we'll hopefully catch up as a squad sooner or later. Must be. That'd be another regret, like, you know, in the cup fund. Obviously, no fans. You can't celebrate with the fans. And then obviously, with the play, you, you play your teammates and all that, you can't, like, go on that. The aisle, have a you know good night out. Yeah, I, yeah, that's massive. I, I, I when I um I think I might have missed the Spurs game actually if there was fans that haven't game because I was on a yellow and I would have definitely nose bombed into the crowd and got a second yellow. So it's probably a good thing for me. But imagine if there was a pitch invasion. That that, oh, that would have been like a, 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 just something you would never have let go out of your memory forever. And that's a shame. I must admit. And I, even after. We're in tier two, weren't we, for a long time for the, the Spurs game? I was so I was told my son like he's coming to watch all these Spurs fans and he was a player, sorry, and he was getting so happy and then like a week before I'm like, You can't come and he's like, Oh, oh, right, okay. And I thought I broke his heart, the poor kid, but yeah, we got over it eventually. Um, unfortunately he never got to display it because of the change in tier systems, but one of the great marine supporters, Rob Fife, had 
bought an Isle of Man flag to wave off some <laughs> tribute. To right, I don't know if you've had the chance to see that on Twitter yet. <laughs> I've seen an image of it. Yeah, I was thanking for that. I must admit, uh, that's that's going above and beyond, and I really am appreciative of that. But uh, I, yeah, I think I have seen a let's say Saint Lucia flag there the other week as well of Josh Solomon there's a few yeah. flags popping up isn't there and a lot of support for the individual players and it's, it's brilliant it's really good are there any views for flags now it's the only <laughs> way for views no view for them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and all the sponsorship that was everywhere, and it. Oh, I must admit, a lot of the media have jumped on the um, the number signs for the houses, haven't they? They love that. Yeah. They really do love that. Oh, they, if, there's one thing I won't miss about the cup run, though, is listening to the commentators are saying that the ball goes in the garden and then the sign oh. and all of that. So <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. I must admit, that's like every interview. They ask you the same question over and over and over again. You're like, I could just press repeat here and answer the same question. Here. Mm-hmm. And, that's it. I think. Um, there was a bit of a disservice done by Dion Dublin's commentary because he kept focusing on, as you say, the um, you know the teacher element for yourself and the normal working day for the other yeah. footballers. A lot of people, when they come in to watch Marine, are always taken aback by the standard of football. They're expecting to see the dog and duck and what they're seeing yeah. is really talented footballers. So yeah. have you had a chance to re-watch the Spurs game yet? And was there any comment that you had on the uh, commentary? I've watched I've, I've only watched the first half. My, my wife made some notes, she said, I just in case they made any derogatory or nice comments here, listen to it. And mm. yeah, when you hear I think it was a comment about the they were happy to play in front of this referee at some stage, and I was like, joking. Yeah. Are you, are you, what, why would I want if you rewind five years, some of these players were in academy clubs and they were going on to these big futures and you'll see professional players in non-league in the next year or two it happens all the time it, it's part and parcel just that we've got to get another job to top up on obviously to get proper money in for the family so yeah they do play on that a lot and it's, it's always going to happen it's going to be the same old adjective every year isn't it that you know non-league clubs financially get all this money now and it helps them but there is different ways and some of these lads on our team are aspirational they want to play in league one and two so yeah some of it it's a bit of tongue-in-cheek and I think Dion Dunn was quite kind to me in the first 45 minutes. I've not seen the rest yet, so I'm not going to say too much yet. But, yeah, it's always going to happen. So. I'll be after wrap up now. There's only about a minute left on it. Just um, just thanks again, now for, for your time, for doing this. Really appreciate it. Um, Thank you for giving yeah. us such a fantastic time as well with the cup from, you know, during this COVID situation. No, I, I must admit that the, the, the main message that me and obviously representing the players is we want to thank you lot. I mean, your your support, your your attention to detail, what you've been given us, you've showed us in, on the social media side. It's been absolutely fantastic. And we can't thank you enough for it, by the way, as well. So it's been much appreciated by everyone at the club. Thanks very much for that, Niall. And cheers to you and to all the men. <laughs> 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 Have a lovely evening. Yeah, you too, man. Good luck. Take it easy. Thank you. See you next time.